onychophagia is now when you break this term down that is onychophagia the term onycho okay stands for anything that is pertaining to nails and the term phagia basically means consumption or eating okay this is also where the term phagocytosis is derived from so the term onychophagia basically means the nail biting habit that is seen okay now this is a habit that usually develops in the late childhood okay so it is usually seen after about 6 years of age okay although there is no restriction or there is no uh, limit for the age okay this is also an ha a habit that can be seen up until adulthood right now this can develop in two ways either it was that the child was already engaging or already indulging in some habit okay such as thumb sucking okay so maybe when he was when the child was younger he was already indulging in thumb sucking habit which has now transitioned into a nail biting habit as the uh, child has grown okay or it could be a result of certain stress that the child is under because of which he has now developed a new habit of nail biting which is not related to any previous habit okay now this age that is 6 years onwards it so this is a habit that's commonly seen in about 7 to 10 years old but like i said there is no age limit or restriction for the age so this is seen across wide age groups right uh, like i said even adults sometimes engage in nail biting habit so this usually develops as a result of certain stresses so when the child starts going to school there is a lot of sudden stress that is going to be uh, felt by the child this could be in the result of academic stress you right where the child is worried about his studies or the examination stress or it could be because of peer pressure etc so all of these stresses could result in uh, the child releasing his stresses in the form of nail biting habit which acts as a type of an oral gratification or a response to the stress okay now there is another uh, habit which can also develop as a result of stress and that is bruxism right now uh, as compared to nail biting bruxism is a more damaging type of uh, habit to indulge in here the patient is usually not even aware that he is indulging in this habit because usually the bruxism that is seen related to stress may be nocturnal type of bruxism so the patient may wake up with the feeling of soreness in his muscles and also the occlusion that will be seen uh, in patients who undergo bruxism habits is severe atresia will be seen right depending on the amount of uh, amount that the child grinds his teeth at night right now this is again a, a habit that can also be seen in adulthood so lot of adults who have a lot of work pressure or any other kind of stresses they also uh, have a habit of uh, bruxism right so nail biting is another such habit and so is bruxism which can develop as a result of stress so the malocclusion that is associated with nail biting habit is not very severe so at most you might see some amount of attrition of the anteriors which or the incisors which are being used to bite the nails right so that is the that is the maximum you will see but with bruxism there will be attrition there will be generalized attrition of the teeth and also there will be spasm of the muscles of mastication or pain or, or soreness across the tmj and uh, you know the facial muscles or the muscles of mastication now this uh, habit of nail biting is also quite embarrassing for the child because if he indulges in this in public it might he might become self conscious and embarrassed right so this is a, a habit that uh, the child might end up doing when he is under stress and he doesn't realize that he is indulging in this habit and one damaging feature that could be seen with this habit is uh because the patient is so in the, uh, is so absent mindedly indulging in this habit it can also cause self harm to the patient so if you see in this image here right the amount of the severity of nail biting which is a response on this of the severity of the stress the child is under okay he can also bite his nails right up to the nail bed so this can cause bleeding and it can cause trauma of the soft tissues in the nail bed right so this again is a type of a self harming or uh, type of a habit so this is uh, this image can also be given so this question can also be asked as an image based question right where they can give you this uh, 
they can give you an image like this and ask you what is the type of habit the child is indulging in so maybe one of the options could also be thumb sucking because in thumb sucking again we see callus formation on the fingers right so this is how you need to correlate the clinical features of various habits in order to come to their diagnosis so if you give, they give you an Im clinical image like this and you can see that here you know this habit uh, here is nail biting because it is up until the nail beds that the and this is a characteristically how the nails will be seen in a patient who indulges in nail biting habits the nails will be completely rounded they will be so close they will uh, so close to the nail bed that there will hardly be any amount of nail that is present beyond the nail bed right it will always be here because even little amount of nail that grows the child might unconsciously start biting it so this can also be asked as an image based question.